So, you know, yeah, and, and you saw most of our, our list are, are fairly the same. But let's go down there. Let's see. Who are some guys that maybe didn't make the top five but still are quality tight ends um, coming back? I mean, I'm kind of looking here at guys that have really good quarterbacks and guys that are kind of taking over some roles um, that are, are wide open for the taking now. Uh, for me, the top sleeper guy is Brant. I think it's Keith, how you say his last name, or Keweth okay. uh, from oh, yeah. Utah. Utah, right. Uh, I, you've got Cam Rising there uh, going into his last year. So, I mean, this is a guy that could have a big-time season. Uh, I mean, you've got where it was Mason Fairchild of Kansas. I was talking earlier about Jaden Daniels mm -hmm. – or Jalen Daniels, sorry. Uh, phenomenal uh, season at quarterback. Future Lions first round picks. Yeah, the Lions always draft tight ends. Uh, and then my other one, I had it here. Uh, Varkis Gums from yeah. Arkansas. Okay. You've got KJ Jefferson there. Um, yes, he runs a lot, but they do still like to throw the ball. This could be a solid receiving threat for them. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, my couple, we, we mentioned one of these guys earlier, Mason Taylor. Um, out of mm, LSU, yep. I think, you know, I, I, a, I want to see what he's got because of the pedigree, but, um, with that offense, they, they really love their tight end. So I think that's going to be interesting. I want to definitely follow him. Um, yep. your guy, the guy that you guys used to have, um, Eric, all I he's yep. now in Iowa with, uh, you know, your old quarterback. So I, I, it's it, like, we talk about combinations. He knows him. He's comfortable with him. So, they love Iowa. What, what is Iowa good at? Defense, special teams, and offensive line and tight ends and things of that nature. So Yeah, everything is, but the quarterback and receivers. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So uh, I'm definitely seeing that just because of the familiarity. And then a guy that went to Nebraska that played at Georgia, Eric Gilbert. Um, mm, yep. His first year, I think he was a like, freshman, SEC freshman uh, player of the year or all American or something to that um, effect got yeah, hurt his team, next yeah. year. Yeah. Got hurt that next year. You know, it just never was the same with all those weapons at Georgia. Couldn't really get find his footing. Now going to Nebraska, we know Matt rules over there. They got a mm -hmm. whole new lease on life. I, I want to see if he could, if he could turn it up for him and, and get something going. So that, that's somebody that's, that's a sleeper for me for real. Uh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I forgot about Eric Gilbert. Yeah. So I, I want to see if he can finally get his footing right. And he'll definitely have the opportunity there in Nebraska. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Johnny said, uh, Jason, you should name him Alex Bia. <laughs> he said, wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, hey, and look, we're going to, we're going to see kind of how these tight ends play. I, I did want to ask you, we just came off of a draft where we had, what do we say, 15 tight ends taken? 15 or 16? Something like that. Yeah, it was a it was a big number. Yeah, definitely double digits. And um, a good amount of tight ends taken before, I think, up through before around the fourth round. Like before that, like yeah. first, second, third. So we know what Brock Bowers is going to do. I think maybe he might be one of the only ones on here that's a bona fide first round pick. If oh, he's that, easily like, top 10. Well, so I, I think I he's want, top 10 pick. But outside of that, does this list compare? I mean, I know a lot of these guys might not be going to the pros because a lot of these guys are a little bit younger. But how does this list compare to the crop that came out last year? I think the overall talent is probably better. But like you said, some of these guys are too young to come out or might stay for their senior season, whatever the reason is going to be. Uh, but – I, I don't think we'll have as good a draft class, but I think this group of college kids is better than last year's. Yeah. If that makes sense. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, and I think that, uh, I mean, as we see in the NFL, um, there's definitely been a necessity to have a really good tight end, a game breaker. Mm -hmm. You see what Kelsey has been doing. Kittle at San Francisco, Andrews with the Ravens. Um, you know, you have a number of these guys now taking over games, Pitts. You know, we saw how what's the stud he was at Florida, got himself drafted by Atlanta pretty high. Things haven't necessarily panned. Right. Things haven't panned out necessarily because of the quarterback 
he hadn't been able to get on page with that, but still he is a threat. But when you think about a Brock Bowers, you know, when you think about a guy like that, that's somebody that you could instantly bring him in and he can be that guy for you. Oh um, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And, and I, I wonder, I mean, has, when's the last time there's been this much hype over a tight end like that? Uh, was it Pitts? No, this is beyond Pitts. That's uh, what I was thinking. It's not close. Um, that's a tough one because when you look at the majority of the guys that are in the league now, Kelsey, Kittle, all them, they were all third, fourth round picks. Right. Uh, Hawkinson was a first rounder, but not the kind of attention that uh, Bowers has been getting his entire college career. Right. Um, I'm thinking maybe Jimmy Graham, but in college, I don't think Jimmy Graham was that lead. He's a basketball guy for the majority of his well, right. career, yeah. And the rest of that team was stacked, so. I don't know that really we've had a guy with the attention that Brock Bowers has gotten. Yeah. I can't yeah. think of one. I honestly can't. Yeah. Uh, Colin, this will not be happening. Philly has a few more positions to fill. Yeah. Some no. no. Unless Philly no. trades up for it. Uh, Bowers might go top five. Yeah. If he like, stays you look at it, And I mean, you've got uh, – realistically – there's a scenario where Arizona ends up with two top five picks. Ooh. You're not going to be able to trade Kyler Murray with that contract. It's the same right. reason the Rams couldn't move on from Stafford this off season. Mm. Uh, could they spend two top picks on Marvin Harrison Jr. and Brock Bowers and load up that offense? Oh, wow. Give Kyler Murray some legit weapons. Oh. They built the oh, offensive line like in this it. past year's draft. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be in that position. They're not going <laughs> to – they'll definitely be in that top five. Yeah. Ugh. Like, that, that's a very realistic scenario. Uh, I mean, a lot of those teams that are up there, if if they miss out on the quarterback, you could take a guy like Bowers if Harrison's already gone. Um, that, that top of the draft next year is going to be so interesting because you got the, the elite offensive linemen, the elite edge rushers, all those guys that typically go top five, ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it'll be yeah, missing one player. Man. It'll be missing Mr. Drake nope, May. Nope. He'll be in college one nope. more year. No, nope. no, he to will win it not. all <laughs> to win it all in 2024. Let's go. <laughs> I got it. I guess I, I guess we can him. dream. I guess we can dream. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Yeah. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, definitely. Pay attention. These tight ends, it's becoming more of a prominent position. Everybody wants tight end, and they're starting to, like, really break it out in college. Um, no, Johnny Dean, I will not stop it. All right? You already well, here's got the thing. Cody you Bob. stop it. You stop it with him coming back to North Carolina. And, Johnny, you stop it with him going to Tampa because neither of them are happening. Not happening. <laughs> He's definitely not going there. I, uh, they're not going to be bad. But, look, we'll, we'll talk about NFL or another show. Uh, <laughs>